Morning, William. This okay. meeting is yeah. being recorded. Welcome, everyone, to uh, another Friday lecture of our uh, lecture series uh, for our mentorship program that's done in conjunction with SACNAS. Today, we have uh, one of our mentees, uh, Tumi Inshloru. I've probably pronounced that poorly. Uh, who's going to have a look at data management challenges and solutions at small mining companies. Um, so with that, uh, Jumi, take it away. It's all yours. Okay, thanks, Craig. So like Craig said, my name is Jumi. Well, full name is Widumelo Ntoro. I am a geologist at a mining company in Mpumalanga. And today I'm going to take you through some of the problems that we face in small mining companies and some of the solutions that people out there are coming up with. So we'll go through an introduction, a process flow of how we work on the mine, how we do our reconciliations with customers. Then I'll introduce you to the Tokovo group, which is um, the guys bringing in the solutions, and then we will conclude. So like I said, our colliery is situated on the northwestern portion of the Ermelo Coalfield, which is part of the Bumalanga Coalfields. It is about 220 kilometers east of Joburg and 19 kilometers east of Hendrina on the R38 road. So we have a total of two seams being mined, both of domestic and export quality. We are a relatively small mine, so we don't have a washing plant. We dry crush and screen all our coal. And because of that also, we need to mine our seams selectively. So with that, grade control is important. And the selective mining, because our seams are separated by different uh, layers, be it shale or dolerite cells, so selective mining makes grade control ever so important. So it's also important, as we know, to keep record of our geological model and update it as we progress with the mining. With the progression of the mining, the amount of data to handle and store increases, which is where we face most of our problems. So to take you through a process flow, our overburden is drilled, blasted, and removed to expose the BC. So I, for, I, I forgot to tell you that we have a total of five seams in the Ermelo coal field, being the A, B, C, D, and E. So on our mine, we only have the B and the C seam exposed. The others, like the A, the a seam has been weathered away, and the D and the E are just not preserved on our mine. So we have to drill and blast and remove overburden to expose the PC, which is um, relatively soft. So we can free dig that without having to drill and blast it. We then, like I said, we need to free dig the B seam. We free dig the B seam and we haul it to the plant using um, chuck and shovel. So as we are mining, we do take pit samples for our grid control and we send those samples to the lab where they are analyzed and shared to the relevant parties, myself included, mostly through WhatsApp. Once the B-seam has been removed, sorry, we can drill and blast the interburden to expose more coal. So after the B-seam, we have an interburden layer made of shales, sandstones, and siltstones. So we need to remove that to expose the C-seam. So now the C-seam is cut into three layers being the C1, the C2, and the C lowers. And this package is comprised of high quality and domestic quality. So our C, low, our C lowers would be our bottom most seam, and that is the high quality stuff. 
and our C1s and C2, those are of domestic quality. So that is also drilled and blasted and chuck and shoveled to the plant. We still do take pit samples for that, which we send to the lab for analysis. So as you can see in the picture on my right, um, there I show you that whole C seam package. We have the C1, the C2, and the C lowers. So the C1 and the C2 is separated by shale parting. Like I said earlier, we don't have a wash plant, so we need to mine all these layers separately, taking what we need and getting rid of what we don't need. Like before, pit samples are always taken um, in the pit and at the plant so that we can, we can keep track of what we are taking out of the pit and what we are sending over to the plant. We have a dollar right cell, like I have mentioned, separating the C2s and the C lowers. And this is still mined separately to expose the C lower. The coal is then mined and housed to the plant. So everything that we mine, we need to sample in the pit and we sample in the plant as well as we are crushing and screening. So in the plant, we take grid control samples and they are analyzed and reported to myself and the plant departments. So once all the parties agree on the sample qualities and a stockpile mass, the, the stockpile can then be loaded out to the specific customer. So taking all of this into consideration, you can see and get an idea of the amount of samples that we take to the lab and the amount of um, analyses that come out of the lab. So the problem that we face with this system that we are working with is that the results become available. So then the plant team can then go ahead and start crushing. And sometimes we find ourselves having built an entire stockpile without knowing what the analysis is exactly. So that is a problem that we are facing, but you know, we, we make it, we have a way. So once we have sent a stockpile to a customer, we need to do reconciliations, matching bananas to apples so that we know what we've sent out and what they have received. So the Waybridge will share a report with the geology department showing how much coal was moved each day. We must then go through each transaction to check for any errors, duplicates, and cancellations. These, re the, the, these recons are then shared with the customer. We also share the raw data with them, and we have that exchange until we come to an agreement. So we receive a recon from the customer and each transaction on their system is matched with a transaction on our system, apples to apples, bananas to bananas. It is ideal that these recons are done daily so as not to have work piled up at the end of the month when reports need to be handed in. So the problem here, problem number three, is that there is a possibility of missing the errors in the data as you go through each transaction. So you can imagine if we're sending out, let's say 100,000 tons a month over the web bridge, now you, you would need to go over that amount of transactions line by line. So you can find yourself spending the entire day working on the recon or an entire week. That's if you, you've had a busy week and you just haven't had a chance to go through your recons. So luckily the universe was on our side and we met with two young engineers who, during their spare time, they have decided to start their own technology and software solutions company. 
they started their journey in 2019 and officially registered the company in the first half of 2021 as they saw that so many companies, be it in the mining industry or anywhere else, are facing similar problems of storing and analyzing the data that they work with. So they offered to create a simple and easy platform to manage our data on the mine. So you can imagine as a small mining company, there isn't really a budget for these fancy systems of managing our data and analyzing our data. So meeting them for me, it was, it was a great feeling because here and, and, and an opportunity to really improve on the way that we work on the mine. So we had a side visit with Chikova on the 11th of June last year, and we took them through the entire value chain of how we work. So we took them through the mining pit, from there to the on-site lab where we take our samples, to the plant where we do the crushing and screening to create stockpiles, then to the weigh bridge, and finally, where we can create a reconciliation so that we can get paid. Some of the, um, sorry. So some of the problems that they noted on, on, some of the problems that they noted at our lab were as followed. So unfortunately, when they paid us to visit our laptop at the lab was not working, so what a way. <laughs> so the analyses at the lab were recorded, were at the time were being recorded on an a, in an A4 counter book because the laptop was broken. And the results of the analyses are reported via WhatsApp to the relevant parties. So we did not have a, a, a proper report of the results. You could only check them via WhatsApp. So the computation and the interpretation of all the data is done in this one book. So these findings show that there is no security for the data that is collected from the analyses and that the computation and the analyses of the results is error prone since there is no method of verifying that the um, calculations or analyses were done correctly. Some of their suggestions then would have been or are that number one, the lab needs a proper computer. They then proposed to build a system to be installed on the laptop for analysis, recording and data storage. The system will then be able to draw reports as identified by the user, which would be itself. Then the system would be integrated into a local mine server to allow for information to be accessed by the relevant departments, be it um, the guys at the plant, the managers, the CEOs, if they are interested, who would be sitting in Joburg. So from that, we also discovered that we, we we could include an inventory management system because that is something that we were missing on the mine that would be incorporated into the main systems at the lab. I mean, if you have little knowledge of the lab, the lab has quite a long list of inventory and it does become challenging to keep track of that when you are looking after more than one department. So the inventory, I'll admit it does miss me. Those emails do oh, do kind of miss me each time because there's just so much to do. So this system would prove to be, the system would prove to make life a little easier for me. We then went on to the way bridge and the observations at the way bridge was, was that the way bridge is an inherent data collection system. And that system is very important or rather the data that the system collects is very important because that's where we make our money. So the reports that are generated from these stockpiles are then stored on the laptop at the way bridge. And at the end of every shift, once we have finished and send a report of each stockpile to the geology department or another relevant department. 
I then must check for errors, duplicates, and check for cancel transactions and everything else that does not need to be in that report. This data is then checked against the data from the customer for reconciliations. So the entire process is actually time consuming and it makes it easy for one to miss all those errors and cancellations, which make which can make life a nightmare at the end of the month. So their solution for us was that we need to acquire a server where our data can be stored. They could create a system which could be connected to a server and the data can be downloaded and stored in the server where the relevant department can, can access it. The system will then be able to detect errors, duplicates, transit, cancel transactions, as well as those returned loads. So the guys were kind enough to let me access one of their demos, just to give me an idea of the kind of systems that they could create for a customer. So the nice thing is that because the system would be built from scratch, we would then be able to cater or or rather to ask them to build the system to cater for all our needs. So the system would, would, would not be, so the system won't be the same as one that they use at another mine. It would really cater for our problems and our needs. So I'm gonna take you through one of the um, reconciliation models that they've done for us. I'm gonna try and open it. Hopefully it works. Uh, yeah. So like I said, the system will really cut the time that I need to spend sitting on my chair on the laptop, trying to get the recons done in time for the end of the month. Currently now I do all the recons of the mine and like I said, I need to sit um, line by line checking every transaction. So if I can get this open, that would be nice. Okay. So this is the typical um, spreadsheet that we would get from the from the Waybridge. Jimmy, we're not we're not seeing the spreadsheet on the screen. Uh, uh, I'm not sure why. You, there we go. There we go. So we typically would have customers, and with, with 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 the way that we work, we would get one huge report with all the customers, one huge report, which makes the work that much. So with this with this system that they be able to and I'm gonna do it. And the nice thing is if I I would not need to be on the mine. Is my activity at six? So 
really, as an impost matter, you know, I could go grab a cup of coffee and go check on other things on the mine. And when I come back, all the data would have been imported onto my lab, which would have all the more easy. So, like I said, the system would be able to detect any errors because we will have, in the initial stages of creating the system, we will have told the system things, we would have input the information that we would want it to gather for us. So if an operator at the Waybridge might have gotten a customer's name wrong or a figure wrong, the system would be able to detect that. And when I download, all of that, it would tell me or prompt me that there are, there are errors in um, the data. So it would prompt me and it would take me straight to where the problem is. So we will have identified our customers and given them a name and given their product name um, similar to the customer name. So here we have customer F, but the product name is customer J. So either the problem is the customer name or the customer product. So if I was to change the customer name to J and I want to run the report again, I check for errors. And then my errors are all checked and the data does not have um, errors. But if I had changed the customer name to F or something else, it would still prompt me for an error. So once I've checked all the errors, I can then create the recon folders. But the nice thing is that this is systematic. So every then I can run my recons, let it gather everything for me. Okay, so once it has um, created the recons for me, I can then go to my folders. Can you still see the other share? Craig? Yes, I think, I, think, I think we're seeing what you were supposed to be seeing. Okay, cool. So, once I go to my folders, as you can see, then every customer will have a folder created for that specific month. So if I go to customer J, which was where the error was picked up, I can open their folder for July, the recon for July. And 
and I'll have everything sorted out for me. Every day of the month, we'll have a page on the recon and the last page will be of a summary. So for customer J, they brought in or we delivered call for them on the 20th. And there you would see all the loads for the 20th of July. So this will help me greatly on site because currently, like I said, we have to sit with this long um, report from the Waybridge and we would have to manually sift through all of that for each and every customer that we have. We're gonna go back to my presentation. So just to conclude is that we, we do realize that we have problems that we can um, fix by talking to the right people and engaging different people on the matter. So some of the problems that we have picked up are that our lab results do not come around timelessly and when we need them. Our reconciliations take too long for us to do as they are done manually. And we find ourselves spending long hours on the recons rather than on other tasks at the mine. And there's no real inventory management system in the place, which is why um, some emails miss us and we find ourselves um, missing stuff when we actually need them. So we definitely know where we could improve our way of managing our data and our inventory. And meeting the guys at Tecova Group, this promised a new and improved way to work, um, to manage our data, to managing the inventory and allowing for more time to tackle other duties on the mine. Unfortunately, where we are right now, we, we couldn't take on the services of Tecova um, because the pit that we are mining, we're almost done with it, but we are looking forward to work with them once we have the next mining block up and running. So I'd really like to thank the guys that took over for allowing me to give a talk on what they do and the guys at the mine as well, and my mentor, Victoria Schuster. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tumi. Um, I'll open the floor for questions uh, or comments at the moment, and maybe I should start with one. Um, the application you, you've, that's been proposed for you is an Excel spreadsheet uh, tool. Yes. Is there, is there a reason that Excel has been used as opposed to sort of a, a, a more sophisticated database of some sort? Uh, I, I see that it is, it's fairly data intensive. Yes, yes, not really, but for us, because we, we wanted something very simple and something that would not cost us a lot of money. So because Excel is, is, is cheap already, we already have it on our laptops, that would have been the, the go-to tool for the system. Okay, yeah, that, that explains. Marius, I think you've, you've raised your hand. You want to un unmute your mic? Thanks, Craig. I think my question is almost related to yours, Craig. Um, I was also wondering about the data security, um, given the fact that it's in Excel, um, as opposed to, you know, even just access, for example, and, and um, or any other data, proper database where you can prevent data um, manipulation or you know people tampering with data is there a way for you to validate the data to me to make sure that you know what what would you do to make sure that there's no tampering or uh, changes ma made to your database um we haven't thought that far but obviously as 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 we introduce the system, then we would be open to other suggestions as to how to get it more secure for us as well. 
Okay. No, I'm, I'm just curious, you know, because I also use Excel, um, mm. but uh, I only use it for the data visualization or calculations, but not storing of data. At the end of the day, data, I, you know, we try to, to uh, try to store our data in a more secure database and only use Excel for um, visualizations or, you know, um, uh, calculations. But okay, yeah, but yeah. thanks, but thanks to me, it's it's quite cool to see the tool. I assume it's made in, in VBA in Excel. Nalene, you have your hand up. Um, yes, other than the data security, um, once again, this just proves how powerful Excel is, which is one of my go-to tools. Um, but I also want to commend you on your bravery for doing a, um, a live run through. Well done on that. Thank you. Are there any other comments or queries? Yes, um, I, I have a question. Okay, yes, go ahead. And um, this, uh, this uh, pointed to Mr. Marius on, on the data credibility and security. So I would like to know which are other um, methods or application one can use to secure their data. Marius, I think that was directed at you. Yes, yeah, so um, I think uh, obviously not everyone is um, uh, that comfortable with working uh, online with online SQL so databases um, but you know a simple tool that one can use um, is usually microsoft access that's a little bit better for um, for data storage and then what you can do is you can always work mainly out of excel um, where you just create a power query connection to your um, to your uh, access database so you have all your data in Excel where you want to play with it and view um, and uh, view the data and make some do some calculations or uh, draw graphs. But at the end of the day, you store it in a more secure, um, proper database. And I think you know if you you can start off with playing with Microsoft Access and seeing what what capabilities it have. But otherwise, there's some more expensive options also out there. Um, that you can uh, um, look into. Obviously, some of them will uh, require you to have a server and a server license. But yeah, I'm, I'm not a data uh, scientist, so I don't know much. Um, yeah, that's basically all I can comment on. All right, thank you. Are there any more questions or queries? Nolene says, well done and a very interesting talk. I agree with that. Now, having had some experience with complex Excel spreadsheets myself, um, there will be questions about the viability of, of using Excel into the, into the medium term future, I think, for, for applications such as this. It, it can get pretty complicated. Yeah. So having a look at some of those other databases is, is probably a very useful exercise. Yes, I agree. I agree. I'll definitely propose it to the big guys because since the last bug stops with them. So we'll see. Okay, with that, um, one last chance for questions or comments. Going once, going twice, three times. Thank you very much to me for your interesting talk. Uh, I'll Thanks. stop recording now and I'll, I'll close the meeting down shortly, but I'll leave it open if anybody wants to make any more comments.